How's it going? Juan Das here and welcome back to this week's YouTube lesson. And this week I'm finally tackling a topic that a lot of people have been asking me about since I really started diving into education, aside from my regular artistic stuff on this channel. And it's also something I get asked a lot about in private lessons, and it's superimposition. And it's something that I also occasionally reference here on the channel. Um, and talk about it in, as in like, okay, you could do a superimposition here, you could try this, uh, try an altered superimposition on a dominant chord, things like that. But I wanted to get to the bare bones essential of what that really means. And maybe dive into the topic for people who maybe haven't explored it yet. So if you haven't already, I would suggest just brushing up on a couple of other things, triads, seventh chords, things like that, so that you can start running with the concept, essentially. Now, what is a superimposition? Basically, let's just look at the meaning of the word superimpose. It means to put something on top of something else. So if you have a chord structure, it's essentially putting another chord structure on top of that existing chord. So for example, let's say I had a C major chord, or a C major seven, I can play G major, on top of that. And that gives me a different sound altogether. I'm going to get into the why in a bit, so don't worry about it. But I just wanted to basically say, at its simplest, it's essentially putting another chord on top of that. Now, when I'm working with beginners on superimposition, I tend to follow a couple of basic rules or a, base, a few basic superimpositions. And we're going to cover that today with just major seven and minor seven chords. So, really straightforward. Now, I suppose, why would you want to use superimposition? What does it allow you to do? Well, for one, thinking of superimposition as... I, I like to think of it as a way of effectively getting towards outside playing, which I covered kind of in my tension and release video, but getting towards outside playing while still being in the key. It's kind of like a halfway house, if you would. So let's say this is your home key, this is diatonic playing, this is uh, the other end of the spectrum, which is outside playing, or just completely being devoid of tonality, so to speak. And then you've got something in the middle, which is you're kind of in the key, but you're not. So essentially what it's allowing you to do is get a little further away with every passing superimposition until you start getting to some more outside stuff and stuff that maybe is a little more heavy, for lack of a better word. So let's actually dive into some things you can talk about, or some things you can use right away. And bear in mind every now and then, I actually just gotta make sure this thing is on the right setting. I'm just gonna have my freeze every now and then with our context, and we're just gonna use the key of C in general, C major and C minor. So let's dive into uh, just a basic C major seven sound, right? So. What I, my first starting point for introducing superimposition to people is that you can take care of a superimposition starting from any of the chord tones. Now bear in mind for a superimposition to really be like a superimposition, it cannot really relate to the whole chord by itself, thereby saying that if we have a, uh, a chord like C major 7, C, E, G, and B, stating the chord uh, putting C major 7 on top of C major 7 is just redundant. Or not redundant, it's a sound, but it's just playing to the chord tone. Superimpositions really gain their strength when you start adding stuff, let's say if this is the chord and this is this, see where I start adding things 
and you start getting more colors with every passing chord, not a passing chord, no pun intended, but with every chord that you add on top of it. So let's say we build a chord off of E, the third, right? Now, the chord that we can build off of here, and this is a really straightforward one, is a minor seven chord off of the third, right? So if I have my, our little friendly context of C major, I'm just gonna stick with this voicing for now, right? So this is what it would sound like just playing C major on top. Actually, that sounds a little odd, hang on. Ah, come on, let's get the root in there. Better. So, chord tone. Even if I'm hitting non-chord tones, I'm basing my ideas around that. We can try E minor 7, which is the minor 7 I was talking about. See, it adds a little bit of lightness to it because we're hitting the nine. That's the only chord that's, or the only note that's there that's not a part of the chord. And you see, not having the root in there kind of gives it a slight weightless quality. It doesn't feel as closely tied to the chord as possible, thereby meaning you can play the chord, you've still got access to three chord tones, E, G, and B from the E minor seven chord but this D adds a little bit of color and texture. So let's try that again, but we're gonna go to the next chord tone up. Uh, I'm gonna use a different C major voicing. More color. So there, I'm playing G major seven. Now, this starts getting a little bit further from the tonality. We're starting to push up. So if we have these four, I know I use my hands a lot for these, but hey, it, it works. So before we had C major, where you know it's matching every single chord tone. You move up from the third, we've now got three chord tones and a tension. When we add G major, we have two chord tones and a tension, and the chord tones anchor you back to the original chord. So in this case, we're adding nine, and sharp 11 as tensions, right? Still going, still going. Anyway, normal day over here. So we have our C major chord. If this thing decides to record, yeah, there we go. So then what happens is that it starts giving us a little more color and starts further enhancing that weightless quality. So, and we get that major seven sharp 11 sound. Let's go another step further. So C major seven, E minor seven, so minor seven chord from the third, major seven from the fifth, and it effectively alternates. We have another chord voicing on top. So what would work here? We've got B, D, F sharp, and A. So B minor seven on top of C major. You might think, how might that work? Well, or how might that sound? Well, let's find out. For me, that feels extremely weightless, really floaty. So that, and you might notice this actually quite closely resembles B minor pentatonic, the same idea applies. That basically that B minor only has that B as a chord tone. And that means that we only have one tie to the original sound. Now, the cool thing about this is that this applies to both your triads and your seventh chords. The same thing works. You can do an E minor chord on top of C major. You can do G major on top of C major. You can do B minor on top of C major. But they'll give you less color or less tension, so to speak. For example, the B minor seven, you've got all your tensions on top of the C major chord. So as a general rule of thumb for major seven chords, what options do you have to superimpose on top of this? Meaning not using the original tonality. You can use the relative minor, which is one I didn't cover, but 
that's something you can use. So I can play A minor on top of it. That'll give me tension 13 and all of the fundamental chord tones, basically. We can do E minor, so which is minor 7 off the 3rd. It's a relative minor, a minor 7 chord off the 3rd, a major 7 chord off the 5th, and a minor 7 chord off of the 7. I know it sounds a little daunting probably right off the bat and you're thinking there's a lot of stuff to remember, but once you've kind of incorporated it into your practice and started training how to access this stuff on the fly, or just familiarize yourself with what can be accessible from where, then you can do the same thing and you can just access it at will. Now let's do the minor version and now that you kind of understand the concept I'm going to speed along a little more. Uh, feel free to pause as necessary. So we've got a minor 7 chord. Let's pick a, a nice little chord for us. C minor 7. So we already know that that works. We can actually, much like we did the relative minor for major, we can do the relative major. So what's the relative major of C minor? E flat. I can do E flat major 7. That gets me the upper structure, and that's actually off the third degree. So we can do major 7 from the third. I can do minor 7 off the fifth. See? It's much lighter, much brighter sounding. Why? Let's take a look. We've got G, chord tone, B flat, chord tone, D, we've got the 9, and F, we've got the 11. We can also do B flat major 7. So, that's extremely bright sounding, right? Right? And that would give us, oh, sorry. So we've got B flat, which is our chord tone, D, which is the nine, F, which is the 11, and A, which is tension 13, meaning we've got a Dorian sound. So as a recap, just to kind of cover what we were talking about before, for the major seven chord, let's say this is the root, we can either do minor seven from the third, or these are our options available to us. Minor 7 from the 3rd, major 7 from the 5th, minor 7 from the 7th. For the minor 7 chord, we can do major 7 from the 3rd, minor 7 from the 5th, and major 7 from the 7th. Basically, it all inverts. And I'm just going to leave it there for this lesson, because then when we start getting into dominant chords, then we start getting into really abstract territory and maybe what you can superimpose that'll have a sharp 9 or a flat 9 or a flat 13 or a sharp 11, things like that. Things can start getting a little more intense. But already this stuff can be applied to your playing and start taking you in a different direction. So speaking of which, this is all well and good, but now how does this apply to your playing? So let's say I'm just going to have a C major sound. Right? So I've got my C major context. Now, how would I, let me just make it a little softer. So how would I actually improvise with this? Much like I've said about improvisation in general, <clears throat> yeah, let me wait till after I'm done. So uh, much like what I say about improvisation in general, moderation is key. If you use it too much, your listener is kind of alienated because they don't have this anchor point. Just like if you stick too much to diatonicism, maybe, or just sticking within the key, maybe the listener can feel a little bored. So this serves as a way of injecting a little bit of spice or a little bit of flair or something different to your solo so that it kind of calls your listener's attention. Like, hey, look, over here, we, I've got something else to show you. And it adds a little brightness and weightlessness, so to speak. It's a character that you can tap into. So if I've got my context, diatonic, and you can use these as resolution points, but be mindful of your context. For example, the other than the third, your superimposition from the 5th and the 7th will give you Lydian automatically. Right? 
G major. B minor and careful So the way I would use it is that I would start pulling from not just arpeggios, but all my chord voicings and turn my chord voicings into arpeggios. And that's actually something I wanted to call attention to. So just because, for example, with the seven or using a, major, a minor seven from the seven, I can't use a minor nine all the time because what's going to happen? I have my C major and let's say I play a B minor nine you've got a real clash between the C and a C sharp, so tonic and flat nine. So you have to bear in mind that if you choose to use these, your chord shapes as your method of trying to get around this stuff, you have to be mindful of not using um, certain tensions. For example, B minor 11 will work. Uh, B minor with an 11, right? That in and of itself will work. Uh, but that's the only tension that you can use. So for example, if I'm playing that sound again, C major, and I want to use that tension, then I can only stick with that. Same thing with G major 7. I cannot use, I can use G major 9, or like that sound right? And that's giving me that superimposed quality, but I cannot use the sharp 11 because that'll give me C sharp. So it's a little bit daunting at first, and you almost have to train your ears to be able to access this stuff or be able to hear kind of what it sounds like. So I would suggest probably start at first by playing, the, playing a chord or a context or find a vamp or something or record one and figure out how does it feel to play an E minor chord on top of this, just at its most basic. How does it feel to play in the context of C? How does it feel to play major seven off of the fifth? How does it feel to play major seven or minor seven off of the seven in the context of a major seven chord? And then once you've started getting a feel for how it'll sound, start trying to incorporate it bit by bit, start trying to force it in there. Speaking of which, I'm going to jump onto Patreon right now for the extended lesson where I'm going to dive into a little bit of how you can practice this and how you can incorporate it into your routine. Uh, thanks to everyone who checked out the video. It really means the world. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. The support... Yeah, what can I do? The support means the absolute world. So I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for more videos and some stuff com incoming next week. So I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys.